Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, a free site, BettingAngle.us, a free site. It is January 27th, 2024. Let's talk, let's give an early opinion on Bevel versus Baturbiev. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just say, either man could win this fight. This fight is really a how you structure the bet fight. Right? We'll talk about it. If I had to pick one guy to win the fight, I would lean toward the younger man, the man with the superior defense, Dimitri Bevel. Right? But let's talk about this fight. Let's talk about how each fighter should approach the other. Let's talk about why, why this fight is really a jump ball. And it's really going to come down to prop bets. Right? Just like when you're betting on an NFL game, sometimes you need to think about more than who wins. You need to think about whether Lamar Jackson goes over 66 and a half rushing yards. Right? That's this fight. Understand, Baturbiev has never been forced to go the distance as a professional. Understand, Bevo has not won a fight inside of the distance for years. Right? So what we're talking about here is somebody is going to have to impose themselves and their style on the other fighter. So let's go back. And let's look at a fight that I believe provides a blueprint of sorts, of sorts, on how to beat Arthur Perturbiev, right? But just understand, the reason I say of sorts is because I believe this fight, and it's one of the most important Olympic matches of the last, oh, 20 years, right? I believe in this fight. Baturbiev actually won the fight. Of course, the Olympics, which I question, right, gave the fight to Alexander Usyk. Now that fight, it's the 2012 quarterfinals, right? I have the video in my favorites folder. For those looking for the video, if you've come across this fight weeks from now, the name of the video is called Men's Boxing Heavy 91 kilogram quarterfinals full bouts London 2012 Olympics right now let me just say it's an important fight because Usyk would go on to win the gold medal at the Olympic Games it's also an important fight because this wasn't the first time Baturbiev fought Usyk as an amateur and, of course, Baturbiev famously knocked down Usyk, won one of the matches. Um, in other words, by the time they get to this match, the two guys knew each other. The two guys came in with experience styles tailored for their opponent. Now, let's talk about what happened in the fight. Let's talk about why I thought Baturbiev won the fight, let's talk about what Bevel could do that worked for Usyk. In the first round of the fight, Baturbiev is sensational. Right? He has a certain Mike Tyson thing going on. There is an air of invincibility. He's getting in the pocket. He's doing damage. His punches are hard. His punches are straight. Now, the scoring is controversial. In my opinion, Baturbiev clearly, let me underline that word, clearly, wins the first round. He's too short and too direct and too relentless for Usyk, who is left just covering up. But understand, th these are the Olympic Games. That first round is scored a draw. In the comment section of this video, we're all amateur scorers, amateur boxing judges. Tell me how you saw the first round. Right? I know 
in the amateurs, they try to quantify rounds, right? I'm just telling you, in terms of ring generalship, in terms of who's alpha, who's having their way, who's landing the big shots, I thought the answer to all of those questions were Baturbiev, right? Then we get to a controversial part of the fight. We get to the second round, right? And understand Usyk begins to use length and movement, right? He looks good early in that second round. Then we get one of the more controversial moments in Olympic boxing, right? We'll call it a Baturbiev moment because these are the kind of situations that Baturbiev gets into because of his style. Baturbiev throws a punch that hits Usyk toward his back, right? It's a body shot, but it looks like it hits Usyk around the kidney. The referee, I believe, and viewers here know I'm hard on refs from time to time, but the referee here in a big Olympic match correctly calls it an illegal punch and gives Usyk time to recover, right? Now, as in the Daniel Dubois fight, as you can imagine, the public is split on the legality or illegality of the punch. Here, I believe it was an Olympic, uh, excuse me, an illegal punch. Let me point out that Baturbiev likes to throw punches behind the guard of an opponent and some of his shots go too far behind an opponent's guard. I thought he threw a rabbit punch in the Callum Smith fight. I can tell you there are many in Joe Smith's corner that question the legality of some of the punches thrown there. I'll let Joe Smith and his team talk for themselves, right? Um, I thought this punch, a right to the body of Usyk, was an illegal kidney punch. So Usyk gets time to recover. But importantly, and this is an important round, when the fight resumes, in my opinion, that second round is either a Baturbiev round or it's a draw. Right? Baturbiev, after the action resumes, continues to be relentless. He continues to force Usyk to turtle, to have his hands up blocking shots. The volume and the aggression are both impressive. Usyk does make a bit of a comeback in the last 20 seconds of the round. I'll concede that. But understand, you either score that round, a Baturbiev round, or you score it a draw. That's my scorecard, right? I had Baturbiev winning the second round. Believe it or not, the official Olympic scoring gave Usyk the second round by three points. Now, we know Baturbiev loses a point, right, because of the kidney punch. But I don't understand how Usyk is supposed to have won the second round apart from that kidney punch deduction. So then we get to the third round, and here Usyk is doing even better. The key is his defensive guard and the fact that Baturbiev lacks ring coverage, right? Which means, my words, my phrase, which means he has to be up close to land shots. In other words, that opens the door for a mover to be outside, to look in control, and to understand that Baturbiev can't hurt him from long distance. In other words, you're not fighting Deontay Wilder. You're not fighting David Hay here. 
right? A guy who could be outside, wing a huge shot, and hurt you from outside. You're not fighting Thomas the Hitman Hearns here. When you're away from Baturbiev, you're away from Baturbiev. You actually get a warning on when you're in harm's way because Baturbiev will relentlessly come over into the pocket. Because he's pocket-centric, a mover like an Usyk or like a Beevil can start to move away, can start to turn their body. Right? Can start to have their defensive construct all set up. Let me also say, too, that Usyk, and it's a valuable lesson here, while he does clinch Paterbia from time to time, he rarely clinches Paterbia. Paterbia has a strong core. You don't want to wrestle with Paterbia. Paterbia is also the kind of guy who you grab one of his arms, he hits you with the other arm. And he can hurt you with short punches. He's a short puncher. So what Usyk relies on is his defense, is his turtling. Right? He's trying to stop Viterbi of shots on his forearms. He's not trying to stop them by grabbing Baturbiev. Now let me point out that Bevel is a very technical fighter. Right? Extremely technical. I know everyone's calling themselves a technician. This guy is one of the few technicians in the sport. He has ample film on Baturbiev because Baturbiev had a long and distinguished amateur career and because Baturbiev has been on his radar for a long time because they're both from the same country. At least they were before geography started realigning itself politically, right? So I am positive that just like we're here looking back on Baturbiev Usyk amateur fights, Beevil's looking back on Baturbiev amateur fights, especially involving Usyk, who was an amateur world champion. So let me sum up some things that you want to do if you're fighting Baturbiev. You want to avoid a pocket as much as possible. Right? There's certain fighters who do this extremely well. Let me give a shout out right here to Demetrius Andre. In other words, you want to be moving. You want to be fainting. Baturbiev starts to come in the pocket. You want to change the angle as he comes in the pocket. Let's remember, Baturbiev is going to start every round across the ring from you. So every round is going to start with distance between the fighters. If you are an athlete with great legs and great timing, you need to be keyed on the fact that Baturbiev, unlike Mike Tyson, who used to bob and weave and jump in the pocket, one of the brilliant things about Baturbiev is the patience. He'll walk over, much more so than in the Usyk film that's in my favorites folder. He'll walk over to you, and he'll wait for the opening. His entry point is crucial, because he will seamlessly find a way to slip in the pocket, and then start doing major damage with very short, hard shots. Right? He has two sets of shots. He has the very short punches, and he's an excellent short puncher. Then he has these looping shots that he throws. Those are the shots that hit you, if you're charitable, on the side of the head above the ear. If you're uncharitable, some might argue that they hit you behind the ear, which would be illegal. Understand they're hard to police because Baturbiev is a hard puncher, so a fighter is in trouble and the fighter is trying to cover up and the question is, did Baturbiev throw a legal punch that you leaned into? 
So he throws it to hit you above the ear and you make it hit you in the back of the head. Is that what's happening or is he throwing the punch to the back of your head? Well, the point is what Beevil needs to do, and he's excellent with it, is he needs to faint, have Beterbiev guessing at when the pocket is open. Right? Understand, too, I have another film. It's Bevel against Gilberto Ramirez. And folks, I hope you watch that film. It's just the highlights after you watch the Usyk fight. Right? Look at the angle and look at the wide stance that Bevel has. And ask yourself a foundational question. Where is the pocket? Right? Bevel will set up shop, but he has a lean. He has great body control. He has a lean. He's not right in front of you. One of the mistakes Callum Smith made in his fight against Bevel is that his shoulders sometimes are parallel. Excuse me, his fight with Peterbiev. His shoulders at times are parallel to Peterbiev's shoulders. Right? You can't have that. You always need a side profile. The reason is you need an escape point. You need a way to pivot out of any perceived pocket. You deny Beterbiev the formation of a pocket and you're severely hurting his game. Right? Let me also point out that the way you deny him the pocket shouldn't be to back up to the ropes. No, what you want to do is circle him. Also, Bevel is defensively blessed. Peterbiev is not defensively blessed. So you want to get off shots and then get out of town. After you get off your shots, you don't want to linger. You don't want the complete shootout with Peterbiev. You just want to land your punches, then you want to move away. In other words, you want to fight in spurts. To beat Bevel, there is a major fact that can be found in the CompuBox numbers of the Gilberto Ramirez fight. Now, full disclosure, Gilberto Ramirez is one of the sport's premier body punchers. He has always been, right? He's a big guy. He has an excellent jab. He can beat you behind the jab as he did Joe Smith. But understand, Gilberto Ramirez is one of those guys who whatever is happening in the fight, is going to put in the work to take away your body. Well, what you'll find in the CompuBox numbers is that he landed a lot of shots, a lot of shots on Bevel, who is a friend of Gilberto Ramirez's in real life and who has sparred extensively with Gilberto Ramirez in real life. So these are guys who knew each other, who had a familiarity who had enough of a relationship where at the end of the first round, you could tell that Bevel was offended by some of the pre-fight comments. Bevel, who's one of these level-headed guys, actually goes out of his way to bump Gilberto Ramirez to give him a, you know, to hell with you moment at the end of the first round of their fight. It's in the highlights, right? But understand, even with the familiarity Bevel could not avoid Gilberto Ramirez's body shots. Now, Beterbiev is a great body puncher. Right? Understand, when you're fighting a defensively blessed guy, whether it's Canelo, uh, and I have a clip of Canelo up at Gambler's Advisory showing spectacular head movement against Danny Jacobs. Right? And let's be clear here, Danny Jacobs is a puncher. Right? Well, 
With Beevil, hitting Beevil in the head flush is very difficult. But understand that Gilberto Ramirez's CompuBox numbers suggest that you don't have to hit him in the head. Right? As Sam Langford used to say, kill the body and the head will follow. Right? You can try to take out his body to slow him down. Enough body shots might take away his mobility might take away his legs by the middle rounds. Those are the kind of things that, in my opinion, Baturbiev needs to focus on, right? Let me also point out, too, that Bevo will stand in a wide stance. Bevo's a combination puncher, but he likes to throw the combinations when he's in a wide stance. My advice to opponents is when you see Beevil in a wide stance, walk away. Right? Don't, you know, just understand certain fighters have certain clues on what they're going to do. If you know Beevil is setting up shop to get off a combination, walk away. Don't let the combination start. Save yourself the possibility of getting hit with three to five punches. Right? So... To sum up here, if I had one bet to make, it would be on Bevel to beat Baturbiev. Right? Um, Joe Smith fought both. Joe Smith was asked, and Joe Smith's a soft-spoken guy, but he quietly said that he thought that Bevel was more of a problem because Bevel moves all over the ring. In other words, Bevel keeps you busy having to find him. And then, of course, when you find him, you're getting riddled with combination shots and you can't hit him because he's defensively blessed and knows where to place his head and how to lean. But Terbiev doesn't have that where is he thing going on. You know, but Terbiev lacks ring coverage and is going to be around the pocket. The question is, what angle is he going to choose? Because but Terbiev will come in at angles on the pocket. Right? Also, you understand Baturbiev is not defensively blessed. You actually have an opportunity to hit him, right? One of the things with fighting Baturbiev, though, is to not get lulled into trying to hit him because shootouts are fatal. Baturbiev can throw short punches, and he has faster hand speed than you think. For gamblers, what this means is you have to bet scenarios here. Right? Method of victory. Nobody has ever gone the distance professionally against Arthur Baturbiev. Right? You know, you want to look at props like Baturbiev by KO. Get better odds than simply betting on him to win. Right? You want to look at over-unders, and you want to ask yourself, is this over-under a little bit high? Understand, the over-under for this fight is going to be crucial because Bevo has gone the distance most of his recent fights. Who's that over-under going to favor? Right? If it were Baturbiev in a shootout, I thought the over-under, by the way, in the Callum Smith fight, and Smith is an aggressive fighter was way too high. That was up around nine and a half rounds. You were able to benefit right off the under in that fight. Right? If they have the over-under for this fight up around nine and a half rounds, wow, that's a little bit too high because I believe there's going to be a tipping point at some point in this fight. Right? I believe at some point in this fight, but Tarbiev's ability to get the KO is going to diminish greatly. Because when a mover, and that's who Bevel is, great legs, when a mover figures out the angles and the timing, it's hard to catch up with him. So you're a gambler, you need to figure out, gee, is someone going to get a knockout? When are they going to get a knockout? Does Bevel have a chance to win inside of the distance 
Would Beevil even want to win inside of the distance? Now, John the Iceman Scully was a very good fighter, right? He is one of boxing's best interviews. He's in Baturbiev's corner. And he has given some quotes to BoxingScene.com in the last few days where he talks about how Beevil had Canelo, a guy he calls a smaller guy, up on the ropes and chose not to finish him. Right? His argument is with Paterbiev in that situation, it would have been a different ball game. Right? The question is, is Beevil one of these guys who wants the KO? Or is he a guy who wants the win and understand and who understands that to get the KO would place himself in the kind of danger that Billy Kahn placed himself in when he ended up getting knocked out by Joe Lewis in a fight he was winning. Right? So the secret here to this fight is going to be in the props offered by casinos, right? Paterbiev, extremely dangerous early. We know that, right? They're going to be round props that are going to warrant people's attention. Just understand that you don't want to be in the ring against a beevil once Beevil has figured out the angles. I want people to revisit the Beevil Canelo fight. The beginning of the fight, the public split on it. Some people feel the beginning of that fight was competitive, right? But let's just say by the time you got to the fifth round, in my opinion, it was clear that Beevil understood he had a clear path to victory. Right? The question here is, is that going to be the case here? I know Baturbiev has gotten some late KOs, but has Baturbiev fought a guy as defensively blessed as this guy, who couples great defense with great movement? That's how I see the fight. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments and your predictions in the comment section of this video. As we get closer to the fight, I'll release another video where we talk about the actual odds, right? It's my understanding that Paterbiev is gonna go through Ramadan first. Uh, promoters obviously would like an opportunity to promote the fight. This fight might happen later this year. Today is January 27th, right? But understand this is a fight of the year potential fight right if these two guys come out they're going to test each other understand they're both russian understand baturbiev was extremely decorated as an amateur uh, i'm sure bevel coming up through the ranks younger guy the next generation uh saw admired studied arthur baturbiev right i would say the knock on bevel is punching power Right? The argument is he's fast because he's not sitting down on punches. What I want people to think about is the fact that he has already faced some of the bigger punchers in the division. Right, Fighting Joe Smith is like walking through a minefield. He also fought and beat Jean Pascal, who, let's give Pascal credit, was one of the hardest punchers pound for pound in the sport at that time right so fighting heavy punchers isn't going to be new for Bevo. right but there's a psychological component here there's a big brother little brother component here right you know um it's like replacing joe montana as quarterback of the san francisco 49ers right steve young hall of famer talks about openly how people looked at him and, you know, didn't think he was Joe Montana, right? This is a guy who had a Hall of Fame career, who won a Super Bowl, right? So is there going to be some I'm fighting big brother type thing going on here, right? As for Paterbiev, 
Baturbiev is willing to trade with you. Baturbiev has a bully mindset. Right? Think Tyson, think Benavides. Is Baturbiev going to respect the punching power of Dmitry Bevel enough to pace himself? Or is he just going to go after Bevel? Right? Let me point out too, Baturbiev has faced hellacious punchers. I consider Anthony Yard to be one of the best punchers in the sport pound for pound. Now that fight was interesting because Yard came out bouncing on his on the balls of his feet. Right? Yard shooting a jab, but you understood Yard is a slugger in real life. And you thought, okay, well, how long is this new style gonna last for him? Right? Yard, everyone has a plan until they get hit in the mouth. Right? According to Mike Tyson. Yard eventually gets hit in the mouth. And then, of course, you know, Yard is there, um, you know, slugging it out with Baturbiev. But even in that fight, where is Baturbiev? Against one of the sport's biggest punchers, Baturbiev is right in front of him. Right? Baturbiev's not running. Baturbiev is right in front of him, is trading shots. Right? This fight has a lot of intrigue. Let me hear your thoughts. I hope you leave them in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.